is said that there is no key to happiness because the door is always open. Sadly, the door to funding your business idea is not open to everyone. Our first entrepreneur, Kivan Sinanan, is here tonight to get his foot through that door, seeking an investment for his award-winning invention that attaches to your keys. Will our investors see the value in this key finder, or will Kevin just get locked out? Let's take a look. Hi, investors. My name is Kivan Sinanan, and I'm the founder of Y Fumble. How many of us have keys? Okay. How many of us fumble with our keys? All the time, everybody. All the time, right? <laughs> we fumble with our keys because it may be dark, the keys look the same, sometimes you can't even remember which keys for which lock, and we may be in a rush. Wouldn't it be great if we can just attach a batteryless tag to our locks, a batteryless tag to our keys, and when we approach our locks, the key begins to blink just by pressing a button and it will also work with multiple locks with different colors and it works with your smartphone app. Therefore, you do not need to keep pressing a button every time. So introducing our pattern pendant solution, Y Fumble. What makes Y Fumble great is that only one battery is required. So therefore, if you have five locks, five keys, only one battery is required. You do not need to change over your locks. You keep your existing locks. And in our next version, we will be utilizing vibration and sound to assist the visually impaired. I am asking for 50,000 US dollars in exchange for 20% of my company. It looked as if it was made away. Okay, I guess my question is, this is a local product? Everything here was done locally. You invented this? Yes. Okay. I, the first two versions I started building myself and eventually I had to hire an engineer to really do this because this takes a lot of thought process and smarts which he So has. I see you said it's patent pending. Patent pending. How, how, how long now it's pending? That were, the patent was first granted in September of last year so, and that is one year. Right. And so it will expire in September of this year but before that period I will be applying for a non-provisional patent, which will be full 20 years. Right. Oh, this is where? In England or in the US? Uh, the patent is in the US. So I see you asking for 50,000 US. Um, how would that be used? Okay, so we will be using uh, 20,000 to do one more round of R&D, which will help it do the mobile version to miniaturize this into a consumer product. and. Uh, that leaves 2,000 for around uh, sales and marketing. And the next 25,000 will be to produce 625 units at $40 each to, to sell to the market. $40 and US or $40 TK? $40 US. US. Okay. That's the that, cost to make it. It's a cost. That's the cost. It will sell for $60 US to sell. But the value is that for similar products like the home automation, the cheapest one is around 79 US, and that is still one lock, one key. Now, this is three locks, three keys for $60. What's, what's your background? How did you come up with this? Well, I come up with this because I need one. <laughs> right? And I refuse to paint my keys. Yeah. No, right? It had to be a better way. I'm an engineer uh, by background at the U University of the West Indies. So that's how I started building. Electrical engineer? Electrical and computer engineering. Forget that. Yes. Your cost is $40 and you're going to sell it at 60 Correct. So that's a 50% margin. Um, where, where's the distributor in here? Um, how are you getting this product to market? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, those are the sort of questions that you have to consider. What, okay. What? So initially, I am going to do market testing through Indiegogo and Kickstarter. Okay. Now, a drop shipper that in the US would charge about $3 per unit to be sold so that we're cutting down our margins further to $17, right? Now what is going to happen is that as this becomes replaced by the, your cell phone, this becomes cheaper to make, right? So as we scale, our costs will come down. So it might cost $40 now, but as we get to that scale and let the smartphone handle all of the processing power, that could come down easily to $30 
and we could still have it. So this being manufactured in the U.S. or in China? It would be manufactured in China but man and managed in the U.S. What that means is that it will come from the factory in China and warehouse in the U.S. to distribute. How do you plan on marketing the product? Initially it's through early adopters. Television ads, too expensive, mm -hmm. it's much cheaper. Have to you started that point. process as yet? Uh, yes, I've started the process of, of doing the Indiegogo campaign, building the page, building some pre-launch awareness. How long do you think it's going to take you to sell the, the 625 units that you need the money for? I could get that done and sold in six months. In six months? Yes. Well, Kevin, I can tell you that I really like this product. I mean, it's a personal problem of mine. I fumble the keys all the time. I actually think there's a broader application besides just com uh, households. I actually can see it working in a commercial setting where in warehouses and, and, and factories and so on, where people fumble for keys and lots of keys everywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they have the labels on them all over the place and so on. I can really see that this has a, has a great potential. Uh, there's some risks involved okay. and it's very uh, young in the production stages. So I would like to go ahead and offer you the 50,000 US, but for the, because of the risks involved, it will have to be for 40% of the company. Okay. Well, I thank you for your offer, but I would like to hear what the other investors, if they have anything to offer. Oh, no, no, no. No? No, no. <laughs> My offer is good for the next 15 seconds. <laughs> Children. <laughs> okay, would you like to go uh, 50,000 for 30 percent? No, 50,000 for 40 percent, Kevin. This thing is young, this thing is new. You're not in production. You have no proven sales. You have no proven track record. I applaud your, your creativity and ingenuity, but it's not, it's not happening yet, is it? So, for 40,000 US, 50,000 US for 40% of the sorry, company. Sorry, 50,000 US for 40% of the company. And I have you as an advisor and as a mentor. Be, I want to have a seat on the board as well. A seat on the board. Sure. Well done. Oh, deal? Yes. So, yeah. deal. Deal. Well, <laughs> <all right. laughs> well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Well done. Congratulations. Thank have a good partner to work with. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, Sheldon. <Charlotte. laughs> Hi. Hi, Kiva. Hi. Congratulations. Thank you very wow. much. Wow, 50,000 big ones. How does it feel? Yeah. It feels very exciting. And now we can get the ball rolling in manufacturing this and to get this into customers' hands because people want this, they need this. So, to go from that to your standing there, mm -hmm. And Joseph Rahal is telling you that you have 15 seconds Oof. to accept his offer. Mm. What was going through your head at that point? Well, I really wanted to hear what the other investors had to say, but if someone is telling you, you know what, they want this, they want to be a part of this, I knew he, he has some sort of, he saw something that I can't see. So. It will be very interesting to see what he brings to the table. I know he brings a lot to the table already. It's going to be a very interesting uh, few months, if not years, in our business relationship. Why fumble? This is a good idea to solve a problem that many people have. The central issue in the success of this company, however, will be its patent. As was disclosed, the patent is pending. That could mean a lot of things. The investor would want to consider very seriously the validity of the patent and understand that a patent in the USA does not necessarily mean that you'll be protected everywhere else in the world. Patents may also have to be filed in Trinidad and in places like China where imitators are possible. So this is going to be a long-standing relationship between the two parties that's going to take up a lot of intellectual property issues along the way. Follow your heart, make your mark. Time to get ready, honey. Chase your dreams and make them happen. It's why you do what you do, and why we're here for you. For your dreams to come true, that's the power of love. Your best interest at heart. 
beat with the improved app from Yellow Pages. With new features like local news, flight and movie times, you're guaranteed to always be in the know with Yellow. Proximity search, gas station and ATM locations ensure you're in the right place at the right time. Download it from the Google Play Store or iTunes today. Job hunting is tough. You put yourself on a piece of paper and hope it will find you the perfect job. With so many options out there, it can be time consuming. What you really need is a simple way to find the job you're looking for. CaribbeanJobs.com has over 1,700 companies posting over 10,000 jobs and it's easily accessed through either your computer, tablet or smartphone. Find your fit at CaribbeanJobs.com and get the job you've been looking for. Do you own a business with 3 to 55 employees? Then Beacon's Be Better Plan is perfect for you. Our comprehensive group plan provides major medical and group life benefits at competitive prices designed to make your small business be better. Call us at 623-2266 for a quote today. He knows what it's like to get hit. He knows what it's like to win. The difference can be a split second if you don't move fast enough. When your body's pH balance is in sync, your whole system is in sync. An acidic diet slows you down. It's like extra weight you don't even know you're carrying. Drinking Puritas alkaline water means more hydration, more energy, more speed, more strength, more stamina. It means quicker muscle recovery and less soreness and injuries. If life comes at you swinging hard, your body needs to be balanced and dehydrated. All it takes is one split second. Do you have what it takes to be on the right side of that split second? Some things you just don't mess with. Shouldn't your hydration be one of them? Up next, we learn why beekeeping can be a sticky business. Entrepreneur Alvin Singh, who runs the Trinidad and Tobago Bee Company, hopes to entice our investors with a sweet deal. I'm willing to bet that he's more comfortable walking into a beehive than walking in to face our investors. Will they think his pitch is the nectar of the gods? Or will he just get stung? Let's see. Good day. My name is Alvin Singh. I'm the owner of Trinidad and Tobago Bee Company. My business is a simple business. We have hundreds and thousands of workers as we speak right now, working in our apiaries in several different locations here in Trinidad and Tobago. With the push in agriculture by previous government and this government, and the report in 2012-2015, they plan on increasing by 7,000 beehives. The problem is there's no one able to produce and fill this capacity that's needed. So beekeepers don't have a source of getting bees, to start. So that's one aspect of my business. My, my intention is to provide the bees and the hives for the beekeepers, the new upcoming beekeepers that are being trained by the ministry. And another part of it and the main push that we have is honey. One of the main products that we have in different locations because of the multi-floral parts of Trinidad and Tobago, we have different tastes in honey. Our flow for the honey here, uh, roughly six hives will produce a barrel. That's 55 uh, U.S. gallons of honey. It sells for about 33,000 roughly for that barrel. So what we want to do is to produce enough to have a stock in place. We want to make this affordable. We want to make this uh, so affordable that people will have a paradigm shift in this taste in here. So roughly we're looking at $100 per bottle. We think if that were to go out in the Trinidad and Tobago market, it will make an immediate impact. My, uh, my, my production started about two years now in different areas and it's grown. We are looking for to set up a, a bigger place for warehousing the honey and storing it. This uh, piece of equipment was brought in from Boston. It's a, it's a piece of equipment they use to heat the honey so we prevent uh, fermentation. Um, you know, honey is a very interesting business here in Trinidad. Uh, why is it that we have some of the most expensive honey in the region and in the world? In Trinidad and Tobago, we don't have disease like in the United States. We also have a strain of bees here that's highly productive. 
in, in 15 days, I can give you a barrel of honey. And no one here is looking at the export market. That's the difference between that and Tobago Bee Company. I have already touched bases with a big player in the Georgia area, the Savannah, Georgia area, and he has stores that runs into South Carolina. Alvin, tell me, what are you looking from the investors? What are you looking for? I'm looking for 1.2 million um, in, in capital to expand on buildings. I, I already have um, land, 2.5 acres, and a building existing. So the percentage rate I'm looking at is 20% on that 1.2. Who are the direct purchasers of the finished product? A lot of people are coming in and buying it by the case. Because of the price that I'm selling it at, they are buying it for themselves and also to resell. Oh, I see yes. you have some samples there. Let me have yeah, a taste. We'd love to yes. taste some. <laughs> okay. So we placed on here two samples, but they got a little smudged <laughs> in between. Right. So the darker one would be from the Blanchichers. So where's this one from? Both of them. The darker, one. Oh, the darker, the darker one's from Blanchichers and the other one's from Kaiwal, second Kaiwal. Oh, okay. So, but they're different colors. I, yes, I understand right. that. Does that also represent a different taste? Yes. Okay. All right. So tell us how many cases of honey have you sold, for instance, in the last year? In the last year, I've produced about 25 barrels of honey. What Be sort of well, what revenue did you have last year in, in, in this? And what do you expect this year? I, mu I must have sold about 10, 10 barrels. 10 so, barrels. Yes. So that's a, a, a total of um, 550 gallons. Yes. Uh, what are you getting per gallon? We, we were selling them, and on an average, we had broken them down uh, in the barrels and sold them for 26,000 per 26, barrel. 26,000 yes. per barrel? Yes. All right. So let's say you get this 1.2 million and you've sold 10 barrels in the last year. Yes. How many barrels do you think you'll sell in the next year if you have the money? I'm expecting 50 equivalent barrels. That is, we have to sell wholesale in bulk and we also have to do some uh, retail. So out of here. that 50 barrels, how yes. much do you want to retail and how much do you want to wholesale? We'd want to do a 50-50 on it. If, if we have the export market over there, then we can push it. If we don't get all of it sent over there, then we'll push it out into the market here. One would think that there may, there ought to be a focus on whether you're doing the retail or whether you're doing the wholesale. So yes. you can and I'm wondering yeah. if your business plan of having both of them is actually counterproductive because you're actually yeah. supplying your competitors, your comp your comp your competitors yeah. through the wholesale side mm -hmm. and then you're talking now about doing retail. I think you're a little bit confused, you know, you want to do three or four things, supply equipment, supply retail yes. on it, supply wholesale on it. You need an investor to come in and advise you from a sales and marketing point of view. But I agree with you, honey, retail honey is where the margins are. Mm -hmm. That's where you're going to get the best return and that's where you're going to make the most money. I, I am willing to, to go that route, but I'm, I'm used to taking a small amount of anything and making it big. Mm -hmm. So based on the current investment, we're limited to that's the max that we can get to, 50 yes. barrels per annum, in yes. terms of at this revenue. At this present um, APRI that we have. Okay, mm -hmm. what does that translate to? Do you know what that translates to into bottles for sale, cases of honey for sale? The, roughly is uh, 325 to 35 um, bottles per, um, uh, per barrel. Per barrel. So, so that's, that's so what we're looking at. gives you 325 bottles? Yes. What size bottles? 750 ml. Can you show me what that looks like? Okay, that's a big bottle of honey. This bottle retailing right now between 140 and 180. Depends on region. depends on the quality and the volume. And your if quality, what is your quality like? Grade A. Grade A. Grade A. Okay. I'm, I'm telling you, if that retails for 140, 180, I want to buy one before we leave today. <laughs> because I can't. At wholesale price. Absolutely, there is no way. Let me tell you, Alvin, I'm, I'm very interested. You know, this, this show is called Planting Seeds. And, and I'm the only farmer in here. And I'm, I, I know I what you're talking. Right? He does chickens. That's, that's, that's not farming. That's, an, that's animal husbandry. <laughs> but, you know, I, I'm interested. Um, um, I think you need a little bit more focus. I think you need somebody like me to come in and help you, tell you what we need to go. I've done production. We do production in Jamaica. We have a bottling plant. I know all about equipment. I know everything. We do distribution. I, I do distribution throughout. So what's your offer? Um, I'm coming to that. Hold on. <laughs> Make the man an offer, Joe. Yeah. 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 It sounds like the percentage is going to be high because you see how he's selling, selling it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm selling I'm <laughs> selling Alvin, let me, let me tell you, I, I, I'm interested, logically, I, I'm a little bit concerned about devaluation. I think we can do a lot more. I don't think we should be putting down um, full buildings. We should be using equity, your equity to expand manufacturing, expand the apiaries, renting lands, not buying, um, renting warehousing facilities at this point in time. Um, yes, you have your land and you have your equity there, um, but let's go. Let's go find lands elsewhere. Let's bring in the equipment. 
to increase our production. So I'll be, I'll be very interested in, in, in making you an offer. Um, 1.2, I, I, I don't have any problems in making that 1.2, but logically I need a, a, a larger share. And I can could, I could talk to you about it. Okay. I'll tell you what. When you guys get uh, a brand and a label and are ready to put it on the, on the, on the shelf, give me a call. Okay. Chickens? I'm just going to buy the one bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just give you a bottle. <laughs> I think you'll be in good hands. Alvin, I look forward to working with you, man. Oh. This, this is a sweet business. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, yeah. appreciate yeah, man. Uh, good stuff. <laughs>Alvin, congratulations. How do you feel? Are you excited? Yes, I'm overjoyed here. I don't know, um, I wasn't expecting the, the investor to come in so quickly. Uh, Mr. Perez came in and he's going to invest in the company, Trinidad and Tobago Bee Company. TNT Bee Company, sharing the best honey in the world, straight out of Trinidad. Congratulations, Alvin. Thank you so much for coming on the show and I wish you all the success in the world. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate it. Bee Man is exactly what planting seeds is all about. Here we have someone who's returning to Trinidad with an idea, grew a passion for his bees. He already started his business, he has historical financial statements, he knows where he wants to go, he has brought in the equipment and guess what? Planting seeds gave him the perfect investor. Joe Perez, who's already in agriculture, would add so much value to what he already has. So I think this is a great match. I think we'll see a lot more from the honey industry and hopefully we'll start to see it on the shelves for less than $100. We're here today at Very Exciting Things, specialists in branding any item for your business. Let's see what they can do for planting seeds. Welcome. Let's show you what we've got. Oh, this is nice. Oh, what about this one? I like this one. Yeah. As for any business, it is important to choose items that fit your brand. The items you seek to represent your business should be tailored to your audience. Yeah. <laughs> now that we've chosen our items, let's get them printed. Thanks to very exciting things, we have the perfect items to market planting seeds. Follow your heart, make your mark. Let's get ready, honey. Chase your dreams and make them happen. It's why you do what you do, and why we're here for you. For your dreams to come true, so that's the power of love. Your best interest at heart. Never miss a beat with the improved app from Yellow Pages. With new features like local news, flight, and movie times, you're guaranteed to always be in the know with Yellow. Proximity search, gas station, and ATM locations ensure you're in the right place right time. Download it from the Google Play Store or iTunes today. Job hunting is tough. You put yourself on a piece of paper and hope it will find you the perfect job. With so many options out there, it can be time consuming. What you really need is a simple way to find the job you're looking for. Caribbeanjobs.com has over 1,700 companies posting over 10,000 jobs and it's easily accessed through either your computer, tablet or smartphone. Find your fit at CaribbeanJobs.com and get the job you've been looking for.
Hi, my name is Akil Aikman and I am COO and software engineer at Ultra Logistics, a young startup based in Jamaica. I have built, or we have built, an application called Shop. It's based around getting taxis so you can be where you need to be. Our application can track your rides, it can pay cashlessly, and you can even book your, your rides ahead of time. But why do you want this? Well, in Jamaica, you can't just walk out and get a taxi on the road. You have to call a taxi company. But that's difficult. You can call in, let's say you have a meeting, it's 30 minutes from now, you got 50 minutes to get there, right? So, you call a taxi. You call, you call, you call, you can't get through, and then eventually you do get through, the operator puts you on hold. This is frustrating. This is something that all Jamaicans go through. What we are offering is a simple application that will give you access to a taxi at a press of a button. No waiting online. We eliminate this hassle. And cancelling is just a press of a button. We can even show you your taxi information and your ride fares before you commit. We save time, we create customer value and give a great customer experience. And what we're asking is 165,000 US for 20% of our company. Let me ask, has the app been developed already? Is it in place or are you still in the software development stage? We have built a working prototype, right? We would like to now move to a closed beta, that's right. So, or we know our technology works. How much have you invested so far and where did that money come from? Personally, we have invested around 2 million Jamaican dollars. And that's come, US. Yeah, two, and we have, um, well, that's come from us mainly. Yeah. This app is built for which platforms? iPhone and Android? Or? Right now we're focusing on Android. We're going to move to iPhone. But we're starting with Android because in Jamaica, that's what most people have. So the we, app is not completed? Or did, did you all test that, that prototype on Android platform Yes, yet? we've tested on Android pro, the Android platform. And we also have a web app. So even if you know about Android phone, you still have access. So tell us a little bit about the market. You know, what, what do you see as the market potential? How many people are taking taxis and calling taxis and that sort of thing? And what's the revenue model? Is it that you take part of the taxi fare? How does it work? We're expecting on a modest, full operation, but still modest, we can get around 1,000 rides per day in full operation. We are expecting to, the average cost of those rides to be $730 Jamaica and we want to take 25% of that from the driver. The drivers though, unlike Uber or Lyft, are not everybody. They're not, they are established taxi owners. They are legally taxi drivers in Jamaica, which means that we can ensure a certain level of service and security to our customers. Sure. So these Raquel. taxi drivers will be <laughs> registered with Juta? Yes, okay. it's okay. interesting you brought that up. That's who we are talking to right now. They have shown great interest in using our platform to use with their taxi drivers, especially for tours. All right, tell us a little bit about your unique differentiator because there are similar services available that could potentially come into your market. So I know you've thought through this. So tell us a little bit about that. All right, the thing that I'm most excited about when it comes to show is actually our AI. We have built in a artificial intelligence that will, well, it enables, it interfaces with the customers through chat, um, with chat applications and through phone. So we have a voice and chat. We're, we've only tested it with Telegram and phones right now, so we can call in. The thing is though, and why this beta period is key, our AI at least needs to learn how people announce it. And cause mm -hmm. maybe I speak clearly now, but the average Jamaican may not. Mm -hmm. And everybody has their own, their own way of speaking. So our AI needs to do that. After about three months, we expect we should be able to shift all phone calls so even if you don't have an app if you go on to call you can speak to the AI. If I was a taxi driver why would I respond to a smart taxi call and have to pay 25% of that rather than a conventional call where I would not have to give up 25% of my fare? The thing is you do when you are a conventional driver you have to give up maybe it's not 25% but it may work out to more you have to pay the taxi company and if you don't own the vehicle you also have to pay the owner of the vehicle, right? Or 25% work, so it's actually roughly the same or a little less, depending on what their, what their weekly income is. But it's not as stressful as, I need to make this much money before I can have something myself. It is, all right, well, I got this money, 
and I know a quarter of it is, has been taken out. I don't even have to think about it anymore. That's have you done that. any profit or loss calculations? Yes. Okay, okay, so what do you anticipate your profit to be in year one, your net profit? I'm being more conservative, so I don't expect to make a profit in year one simply okay. because the tools are expensive. The, main, the most expensive tool is actually the Google um, app license, which is around 11,000 US starting, right? But once we get past that hurdle, we should be breaking even somewhere in year two, and then year three, we'll be making us some nice money. We are hoping... Define, define nice. <laughs> okay, well, based on full operations in Kingston alone, we're expecting to make a profit of our own 40 million. Um, Akil, on my part, let me tell you, um, I think 165,000 US, you're going to need a lot more than that. Um, just from our advertising, marketing program to get that, um, um, uh, that, that penetration and the app going that you're going to want. Um, unfortunately, you know, I don't think I could plant a seed with you. Um, in this deal, I, I apologize. Um, I'm, I, I'm just not that interested in this particular aspect. It's not in my future vision to invest into a business like this. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think um, I'll be invested in this, this business. I think that as much as there are competitive reasons why it may not work. I think there are a lot of reasons why it could be incredibly successful, and I look forward and hope for that for you, but unfortunately, not with me. Yeah, Akil, I mean, I like the idea. It's just too rich for my blood, so I'm going to have to pass, unfortunately. All right, planting seeds. Um, thank you for your time. Right. Good luck, Akil. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Hi Akil, so unfortunately that did not go as planned. What was going through your head as all of our different investors were giving their verdicts? Well, I was very nervous and although the feedback or the outcome wasn't as favorable as I'd like or wasn't favorable at all, I still got a lot of good feedback. I still had a great experience and I think the next time I'll be better. <laughs> Shub, I'm really sorry you didn't get an investor. This is the type of investment, of course, first mover is really the one that will be successful. We've seen it work with Uber 10 years ago. No one thought Uber might be a success. But here we are trying to do the same thing in the Caribbean, and we're not exactly seeing the commerciality. You've done your research. You know where your revenue is going to come from. I just don't think you got the match make here. You need the right investor who will believe in your app and who can take it further. So keep going, keep developing, get that app developed, and I think you will find someone to back you up.